Hello everyone, for those who don't know me, my name is Annie Murphy, I'm a GP at Wideway Medical Centre. Um, now I understand that um, during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, there has been a greater push for remote working and uh, also for patients to have more online access and digital access, um, such as DoctorLink and patient access services. Um, so. Uh, uh, within our practice, we have tried to push the use of patient access for patients to book their own appointments and uh, order medication, as well as um, asking uh, us questions directly via the patient access app and also to view their results as well. So I was just going to uh, go through how we can encourage uh, how we have encouraged the use of patient access and how to enable somebody to have online access so uh, i've got mickey mouse here who's our dummy patient and you would note that on the blue ribbon usually you will see these two icons the uh, this one means online services and if mickey mouse was a minor or had somebody caring for them uh, the carer or the parent could become a proxy access user for this patient. So usually it would be black if they haven't got an online account. It would be orange if the, their account is inactive and it would be green when they've got uh, an active account and they're actually using it. So you can easily tell whether somebody has got online access or not. So if they haven't got online access, you would go into this icon up here and the registration. So if you tick that, it would bring you to this page. OK, and in order to give people right, so usually you'd see the demographics page first. If you go onto the online services tab, click add online user. And here you will have two choices, one to either add the current patient to have online access or um, to have a proxy user registered and linked to them. So if I did proxy user first, because it's quicker to demonstrate. Now, so for instance, if Mickey Mouse was a five year old and his mom already has an online account, you can then search for his mom's name, click fine and she'll come up here. If you click on her, the option will be to link her account with Mickey Mouse and then that will be it and then she would have access to him. However, if uh, it is the patient themselves wanting an account, you would go to add current patient, check their ID. You have a choice of either doing a, an identity document or personal vouching, depending on what you're most comfortable with. And then edit their access. So the default would be that they can book their own appointments, order repeat prescriptions. This is only the prescriptions that's on the repeat list, not on the acute list. At Wideway, we have activated messaging services, which means that the patient on their app can actually directly message um, the surgery for either administrative or clinical queries. And uh, yeah, every practice can have their own workflow arrangement on how to deal with this. Uh, the messages would actually come to you under tasks. So clinicians can then go into your task link up here um, and under the tasks you will see um, your personal tasks. But if you go into global view, you should be able to see all of the online messages and answer them. But because of the IG uh, problems, uh, for IG reasons, I can't actually show you the actual task because it will show other patients as well. Okay, so for uh, you then, in terms of their record access, you have the choice of either giving them a very brief core summary care record, which would just be their um, what's on the spine, essentially, or you can give them a detailed coded record. And there you can then choose what you want to give them. So allergies and medication are um, already default, but we have activated lab results, which is useful um, for some patients but can be confusing for other patients so you have to be quite careful with the um, comments that you make on the results so we change the comment name so uh, the comments to become a bit more easily understandable by a lay person 
uh, with activated immunizations and problems as well. Uh, in terms of documents, if you activate this, you may allow the patient to see third party documents. So this is not recommended and consultations we have inactivated as well. And so if you click OK, that has then effectively created an online account login for Mickey Mouse. And if they have provided you with an email address, which is ideal, then you can just email their PIN number to them. So you would be able, I can't say this because I haven't got it. So you would be able to go back in there if you've done something wrong to edit again using that function so you can look at find that again if you forgot to tick something and also for identify identity verification you can go back and um, edit that as well if you ended up having a identity document then you can add that um, extra and if they've lost their pin you can then reprint it or re-email it to them the pin the pin would come as um, their own personal number as well as the practice number and they need both numbers to be able to create an account okay so that is uh, allowing mickey mouse to get a patient access so they just need to download the patient access app um, and then follow the instructions on the pin um, and it should allow them to get uh, an account so in order to assist us in um, sort of Pursue, pushing this online access option for patients. Um, we have created some templates personal to our um, surgery. One of them would be the um, results online access and the register for patient access um, template. So for us, what we've done is uh, on our website, we have got the ability to register for online access. So we would then email this to the patients. And then um, they would be able to go to the website and register. The other thing we have mm -hmm. sometimes sent would be results and online access. So, um, for instance, if they had a result, say, low vitamin D or something, um, and or high cholesterol or something, or a, a result that needed physio, on the actual lab results, the comment would be, please self-refer to physio with the number there. And then we would send them a text message to say your test results with associated advice are now available to be uh, viewed online by patient access. Uh, and that we've given them the link to go there and register for it. So there's just sort of some ideas of what we've done to encourage our patients to use online access. Um, our patients are able to book direct telephone consultations and video consultations using patient access. Uh, and uh, we, we're hoping that that sort of um, flow via the digital channel would reduce the actual telephone load that, the, that we are seeing. And uh, I hope this would then continue post COVID times as well with more and more of our patients getting online and using it. So good luck with everything and I hope everyone has success uh, in digitalizing their population.